Well, hello there. I'm not quite sure if this is the kind of glamping tent they were talking about, Bruh. but I got some better ideas for what you can actually do on a budget with different tents to start your glamp site or just venture out to the woods. Let's talk about it. Bing bong. Nice flipping choice. What's up you glamping gurus? It's Garrett Brown from the Nice Flipping Choice channel. Back again with some more glamping gumbo for your soul. Today we are talking all about tents. Tents come in all shapes and sizes, prices, and everything else under the sun. We're gonna discuss different shapes, materials, and at the end, I will rank which ones I think will be the most profitable if you actually do them. Now, most of my knowledge comes from research building my own glam site, Google, and good old YouTube. Last one to say what subscribes, what? Gotcha, you gotta subscribe. Now, Luxatic, Lux, Luxatic. Are you sure about that? Three hours later. Luxatic.com put out their best glamping tips, which I will link in the description below. Now, I would highly not recommend going to just your local academy, grabbing whatever tent you can from there, putting it on your property, and saying you have a glamping tent. There's gotta be a little bit more creativity and pizzazz, as, as some may say, to the actual structure. Now, there are four main shapes that you should be looking into when you are gonna purchase a glamping tent. The first is the bell shape. It's a cute little bell, cute little bell. Which, as the name says, forms sort of a bell looking shape. There's usually one pole down the middle that holds a lot of structure and these are some of my favorite for just how they aesthetically photograph because they just look the coolest out of some of these tents. Now next is the wall tent or safari tent kind of is you've probably seen pictures of. These are more spacious and usually a little more pricey because there's probably some more work involved with different carpentry or framing or something like that. There is the Davis King glamping package that's pretty popular and quite a few of these out there safari tents. So just do some research to see who actually may have the best for your location. The next they cover is the TP. Now these are very, very popular and very Instagrammable as most would say. And in the article, they say they're pretty easy to put up. From my experience and research and from what talking to other people and things like that, because I almost considered doing a TP tent, they seem a lot harder to put up than some of these other tents that were talked about. There was talks about getting a cherry picker in to put a covering on top of the TP, no matter if you're using a specific style of stick. There may be some out there that can, you know, have maybe more rain protection or they're probably lower, but from what I was seeing, these seem to be like a lot more work. That's one reason why I passed on them and they're also not the cheapest. The other reason I passed on them was because of some cultural appropriation I wasn't really too positive about. I felt wrong putting up a TP and profiting off of it when there's a local tribe not too far from where I'm living at called the Naskilla tribe and they have their own casino and a different type of reservation over there. If they wanted to do it, they could do it. There are some really good TP makers that do partner with different tribes and give them some of the proceeds and, and, and employ some of the Native Americans and things like that, but it wasn't something that I just personally wanted to attack at this time. And there's also quite a few of these out there already. Now, the last one they talk about is the yurt. Now, I personally don't consider a yurt a, a basic glamping tent by any means. They're pretty hard to put up, usually cost a little more, but you can make a pretty penny on Airbnb putting some of these up, especially the more high end you build up the yurt. So this would be the most expensive one there, but it also will give you the best ROI, in my opinion, of these tents that they considered. These are becoming massively popular, maybe even even oversaturated to a point because even in the past couple months there's been a few built around me that's why I'm glad I chose geodomes because I'm still the only one in my area and I wouldn't be surprised if some of these places start maybe selling some of these off and, and realize that it wasn't as easy as it actually takes to run a glamping site so you might be able to pick up something for a little cheaper than you're expected the next thing you need to know is the different type of materials first one is cotton canvas these are pretty popular on a lot of different tents and they're usually on the cheaper side of most of them that you're gonna have to put up poles do need to be sturdy though that are holding these canvas tents up the next step up from that is usually a waterproof type of material. These protect you from heavy downpours. They're usually not as breathable as non kind of waterproof fully tents, but this will protect you from year round weather. The next on top of that is a fireproof canvas. That is great if you're gonna use any type of heating indoor. And the last one is some type of synthetic canvas. These are usually the lighter and the cheapest out of all the options. And usually best if you're gonna pack it up and move it around a few places and you're just kind of researching this on your own. Now they did list 20 different types of tents in their article and like I said, it will be linked in the description below, but I'm just gonna kind of run through my five favorite that I saw in there that actually might be able to make a glamping business if you wanted to. If you're looking for something else, there's some really cool ones in there too, so go ahead and look. Pop-up number 17, the cave tent. This is pretty cool. I don't know how much it actually costs. Let's click on it real quick. It says it's not available, so never, never mind. Scratch that one off the list. Pretty cool though. Then we got the winter TP kit. Nope, not making it. Here we go, 15, the white duck canvas bell tent. This one could definitely be a cool little glamping tent. It's not on the page as well. I'm willing to bet my last dollar that you can find these tents still somewhere online. Type
typing in the name. Let's see what else there is. The White Duck Alpha Canvas Wall Tint. That one looks like it could be pretty good at number 13. The Kakak, oh, they're trying to get me with that name. Oh, the Play-Doh Four Season Belt Tint, number eight. Number seven, the Dream House Four Season Tint. And then all the way six through one are actually really cool as well too. So click that link in my description, check it out. Let me know in the comments which one you would like to stay in or you're thinking about purchasing now. Now that we've talked about tents, help me pay my rent. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs>